い発見あ,ありがとう Hmm, I don't know, guys. 3.5 stars seems a little iffy to me. Granted, anything's better than Starbucks, but still. This week, we didn't open with just a recap, but rather I think a shot they forgot to include in the last episode showing the Precure's Elemental Bottle Collection so far. Yeah, not doing the best job selling your product there, guys. Anyway, the episode proper opened with Nodoka narrating about a legendary tree that could eternally bind friends. Um, last time I checked, wasn't the legendary tree supposed to eternally bind lovers? Did they finally let those Yuri obsessed twins write an episode? Anyway, they made their way to the tree and what the hell's with this perspective shot? I mean, I get that Latte is supposed to have the high ground, but because the background here lacks any real sense of depth, it makes it look like she suddenly turned into Sadaharu. They eventually found the tree, or rather, what was left of it. Nah jeez, Gandor got to it already, didn't he? Now, according to this old dude who was clearly going through a midlife crisis, seriously, that jacket. How do you do, fellow kids? It had succumbed to natural causes and was literally on its final legs, as the town board was going to chop it down soon. Mr. Midlife Crisis also told them that it was no big deal, as there was no such thing as eternal friendships anyway. Yet, in spite of those harsh words, Nodoka believed that the old dude was actually sad that the tree was going to be cut down soon. Luckily, it still housed an elemental, whom in spite of being as old as the tree, still sounded like Mumei from Kabaneri. Anyway, unsurprisingly, it told them that the old guy named Tetsuya made the pact with two friends there 50 years earlier, and was clearly saddened by the tree's current state, having visited it several days before the Precure found it. To get more information about this trio, the Precure visited a coffee shop they frequent together. They tried to get some information from this waitress who, yeah, would clearly know about what happened between some old geezers 50 years previously, ignoring the fact that she's clearly in her mid-twenties or so. However, she did know two-thirds of the trio who just so happened to walk into the shop at that exact moment. Well, that's just lazy writing. They told them about Tetsuya's situation and asked if they could beat them at the tree. And in a pretty well done scene, the two silently turned down their request for reasons we could clearly figure out thanks to their wedding rings. Yeah, as long as it doesn't involve a creepy deity and his man cleavage, I won't judge. Seriously though, I gotta give this episode at least a little bit of praise as they never outright say why exactly they had a falling out and just let the audience fill in the obvious blanks. It's subtle storytelling that we don't always see in Precure, so yeah, good stuff. Meanwhile, in the Byogen Kingdom, Bati Tomoto was, um... Pretty sure they just secretly recorded Soichiro Hoshi during his break. Puppy! 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 Though I guess these guys weren't fans of Japanese rap, don't blame them. And the rat managed to undo all of his previous brown nosing as they told him to drop his beat somewhere else. Back with the Precure, Nodoka tried to get Tetsuya to go meet his former friends at the coffee shop, and predictably, he also denied that request. This led into another pretty good scene where Nodoka explained why she was so dead set on reuniting the trio. She was afraid that the three of them would also break up. Well, that depends. You think she was going to try and take you all for herself? Okay, that's not out of the realm of possibility. Seriously though, I do kind of like this scene as it does remind us that these two are likely the first real friends Nodoka has ever had due to her extended hospitalization. She would have a genuine fear that she might lose them if she wasn't careful. And you know, considering what happened last week, it's understandable. Even though they did make up last week, insecurities like that aren't just going to go away, so this bit of them making a pact of friendship under the legendary tree's stump wasn't a bad follow-up. Anyway, our heroines later came up with a pretty good plan. They were going to throw a farewell event for the tree to draw out the trio. Stump or not, it was an unofficial landmark for the town, so they would be able to garner a decent amount of attention for it. So, with their school's permission, they managed to use their facilities to spread the word and what the bloody hell? <laughs> yeah, that's just there. I mean, I guess they have to advertise that film somehow since it has been delayed due to the pandemic and everything. But still, should we like count that as the first crossover between these franchises? Well, that 
kind of out of nowhere cameo aside, the Precure managed to get much of the town to come out to say farewell to the tree, with the exception of the old friends. Luckily, a predictable attack by Bachitomota managed to get their attention. Thus, the three reunited under some of the most unusual of circumstances. Granted, I kind of wish I could meet some old friends in front of a rapper tree myself. And sadly, the rapping Willow was probably the best part of this week's fight, as the Precure just spammed a bunch of rider kicks before they quickly finished it off. MC Batetimoda! <laughs> Again, I'm pretty sure he did just cut Hoshi while he was on break. However, even though it was a quick fight, the tree that was already on death's door didn't survive. Still, it did accomplish its job and managed to reunite the trio, and even though the original tree was gone, a new root sprouted out of it, and the elemental found a new home. Well, that's nice, and y'all just gonna leave it there. Um, you haven't forgotten that they're gonna chop that thing down later, right? Um, okay, the episode ended with everyone being friends and the Elemental being blissfully unaware of what awaited it. It's kind of unfortunate that the biggest reaction they got out of me this week was that random Doremi cameo. I mean, this episode wasn't really bad in any sense, but it also wasn't really good in any sense. I heard that maybe some subtle storytelling, but still a bit of a filler episode throughout. Without give you away too much, I think some of us were expecting that this episode about a tree would tie back to stuff from a couple weeks ago, and maybe it still will, but right now, there was no actual plot development to speak of here. We did kind of get a reminder that Nodoka has lived a lonely life due to her illness, leading to a pretty good scene where her friends assured her that they weren't going to leave her anytime soon, though really, the best Friendship scenes were definitely between the elderly trio. Again, I gotta applaud this episode for pulling off some nice subtle storytelling. Just through some little clues and the expressions on their faces, we could clearly map out what exactly happened between the three of them with no direct dialogue. It's a good sign that shows that in spite of this only being his second Precure episode ever, Ryunosuke Kingetsu is going to treat this show with as much maturity as he did with Shugo Kara at least. That said, this was definitely the weaker of his two episodes, and felt more like a writing exercise than anything else, because I did some good subtlety and a rapping rat, can't forget about that. This was a pretty forgettable outing. And at least next week looks like it might be a little better. If you haven't seen it yet, I just posted my review of the Happiness Charge film, and as a result, I wrapped up yet yeah, another series. And you know, in spite of some of my issues with this season, this was definitely a high note to go out on, and just a pleasure to cover one of my favorite solo movies of this entire franchise, with one of the best insert songs ever. Next up on the docket, though, will be the second volume of the Mahotsukai manga. Gold Princess will still be of a bit of a ways away, as there are other things I also want to cover. Sorry I'm going to end up keeping some of you guys waiting as a result, but still, look forward to it. Until then, though, farewell for now, my friends, and... Hmm. If you'll excuse me, I have some work to do.